Hi, my name is John Goodman. We are talking about wire fraud, or maybe better said, wiring fraud today. So what's an example of what we're talking about? Imagine you are proceeding to close on the purchase of your home. Your down payment is $40,000. You might want to wire that money to the closer, or the closing company that's closing on your transaction. You get wiring instructions that appear to be from that company or from your real estate broker instructing you where to wire the funds. However, the wiring instructions that you receive are bogus. Uh, the bad guys and gals have hacked into somebody's email account who have sent you an email and instead of wiring that money to the title company, the closer you instead wire the money to the bad guys who steal your funds. How do you avoid this? We're going to talk about that in a minute, but let me clarify what we're not talking about in this video. This, this kind of fraud is sometimes called wire fraud, and it is wire fraud. It is wire fraud, but a lot of things are wire fraud. I say this to you because you may Google the term wire fraud and see a lot of things that have nothing to do with this topic. That's because wire fraud has been around for not years, not decades, but centuries. My understanding is, is that the first federal law that made wire fraud illegal was created at the end of the 1800s. That's not the last century, that's two centuries ago. And when they were talking about wire fraud, they were talking about, I presume, wire fraud over telegraph lines. Wire fraud in general is any kind of fraud, essentially, that occurs over state lines. And uh, while this is wire fraud, I think it's more precise if we call it wiring fraud. It's fraud trying to induce you to wire money to the wrong place. Okay, what can you do to avoid the problem? And that is, is you've got to be especially paranoid. You've got to be especially careful in any circumstances, whether it's buying a house, whether you're the seller of the house, whether it's wiring money in any context, to, to be confident that you are wiring the money to the right place. And what you have to be paranoid about is getting the information from a bad source. So what do you do? You certainly do not rely on emails that come to you uh, with uh, wire instructions. Um, because what happens is, is the bad guys hack into the closing company or hack into the account of somebody else involved in the transaction, and that's why real estate transactions are so vulnerable because there's lots of players in the transaction. There's real estate brokers, there is uh, title companies, there is the mortgage lender, etc. So you don't, you don't rely on emails uh, uh, from these people. You also don't rely on websites because, because the bad guys can fake websites. So what do you do? You talk to somebody whose voice that you recognize. And, and and so then you know, like if you're talking, the best source would be to talk to somebody whose voice you recognize at the closing company, which is, at least in Colorado, typically a title insurance company. There's somebody whose voice you recognize, and then uh, they will give you those wiring instructions verbally over the phone. Or maybe immediately send you an email. Uh, another thing you can do if you don't recognize the voice of anybody at the title company, you talk to the, your real estate broker. Hopefully you recognize the, the voice of your real estate broker. And your real estate broker, if they're smart, won't give you the wiring instructions, but your real estate broker will give you the phone number of somebody at the title company. You can rely on that phone number because you recognize the voice of the person who gave it to you. Then you call, make sure you're talking to that somebody, and then that somebody at the recipient of the wired funds can give you the wire sources. Hey, uh, for people of my generation, one of the greatest movies about uh, a con was a movie called The Sting. And one of the things that happened in The Sting as they were trying to con a bad guy was they, they needed to set up a fake Western Union office in order to have the appearance of credibility, in order to induce uh, this uh, person they were conning, the bad guy who they were conning, to uh, rely on, on the good guys, the good cons, if you will, in this thing. In the world that we live in right now, people don't need to fake brick and mortars 
things anymore. They don't need to fake Western Union offices. They don't need to uh, fake banks anymore because what they can do is set up websites, manufacture a letterhead, manufacture a letterhead for emails that make them appear to be the real entity. Be careful out there because it's it much easier to fake people out now than it was 100 years ago or 30 years ago. That's all I need to say about wiring fraud. Be very paranoid about the source of your Wagner instructions. And in general, remember, we live in a complicated world. Be careful out there.